I'm Tia Borden with Mining IR. It's day one of the Mines and Money Conference here in London. With, with me is Brad Rourke, President and CEO of Scotty Resources. Brad, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. You came all the way from BC as well. I did. How yeah. was the play here? Well, I did the red eye on Sunday night thinking I'd be smart. And I couldn't sleep last night. And so I only had about two hours sleep. I just could not get. So the flight was great. Well, I'm feeling very tired. <laughs> well, you know what? London will keep you on your toes. Um, we are day one. So can you tell us? Obviously, there's a lot on the go. Couple last couple of years have been a little challenging with the, the global pandemic. But you have been busy. You have a couple of projects on the go. Can you tell us about that? Correct. Sure. So we operate up in northwest British Columbia in the Golden Triangle. And uh uh, basically centered around a past producing mine that produced in the early 80s. Uh, Scotty Gold uh, produced 16.2 grams per ton and shut down only purely of, because of economics. So we've been, I'm in my seventh year now with, with this project and for the first three years was more consolidating lands and, and modeling and, and just taking an old mine that existed in bankers boxes and did all that unsexy stuff that you have to do that the market won't care about to get ready to do our an, an initial drill program was in 2019 and the market was still interested then uh, but then my 2020 program in 2021 we kept ramping up we did 2,000 meters then we did 7,000 last season we did 14,000 to a very uninterested market but uh, for for our home team uh, lots of success, just in a time when nobody cares. So, um, you know, it's character building, but uh, we could be, things could be worse for sure. So we're happy and, and uh, you know, we've been able to fund ourselves. And so we're no one duress that way. Just frustrated when you look at the tape at the stock market. And I'm sure, you know, many other people were facing those same challenges. Oh, we're all, it's a ship of fools here. We're all in the same boat. Nobody cares about any of us. So we're all, it's all in good company. And, and so there's, a lot of good companies out there that are facing the same challenges we are and you know it, it's survival of the fittest so uh, we just just you know what you know and keep your head down and just work and I can't control the stock market but I can control what we do. <laughs> now going into 2022 what are you most excited for? Well up until last season we had theories and we were on the hunt. We were hunting we had about four different zones and uh, we, were, we were proving out the Scotty asset which is you know, we have a relative degree of confidence that we can expand that, but we're also looking at, at three other zones, just hunting, so to speak. Well, last year, I think we tagged into something, we call it the blueberry zone. Uh, we're no longer hunting. So we had uh, extreme success. And so what I'm really excited about is we're gonna continue drilling at Scotty for sure, but we're no longer chasing veins. And we've been chasing these high grade veins for the last few years, uh, but, the situation at, at Blueberry is it's a contact uh, situation where the sediments and the volcanics and where those two pieces of rock come together, this is where the gold is being trapped. So it's a lot easier than, than chasing veins that moving around and, and pinch and swell. And, and so we're really excited to, uh, we, we validated that theory last season with great success. And uh, this year we'll do double what is, we've drilled on Blueberry in three years. So we, we have a high degree of confidence that uh, we're on to something good and, and we're really excited to get at it. Lots to look forward to. Yes. Brad, tell me about the team behind you. Uh, sure, so uh, Thomas Mumford kind of leads uh, the team and he, I stole him. He was the program head for BCIT and I met him on our project 2017 when we were relogging core like again all this unsexy stuff and and so he had his summers off and so he'd always go into the field and so it just didn't make sense why he was in academia and I said well Thomas why are you in academia and he goes well every time I graduated there's a, a, a downfall like a downturn in the industry and so he got his PhD in 2012 so again the market turned on him he started teaching a course at BCIT ended up being the program head he was on my relogging program and I could tell he was re really like the geology and uh, so he kind of worked part-time for me for that one year and I, I paid him and then he left BCIT and he's been working full-time with us for four years now so yeah yeah so we're really happy to have him and then you know, young PhD, has been graduating all the mine engineers and geologists for the last seven years. He was also be able to uh, help that team put together. He knew who was good and who wasn't, right? So he kind of, he's a millennial. And, and um, 
So I recognize that, and, and so the team that we built under Thomas, uh, nothing short of fantastic, and yeah, they're all with us. Uh, consistently for the last four years, we, we pretty much have a consistent team that's, so they know the rocks, and that's important, right, rather than bringing fresh people in, and you know, geology is unique everywhere, so uh, these, 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 yeah, these people have the experience, and and they're all excited to be back working with us. So we've got a good team. It's, it's fun. Yeah. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your sustainability platform? Well, on a sustainability side, uh, people would be excited or, or, or if you're checking that ESG box or what be it, I'm a brownfield site because it's a past producing mine. So uh, we're already permitted. It's an old mine permit uh, situated with it. So you're not going to go through all that hardship as you would with the government going through that. Also... One of the reasons I got involved is, is I was living in a little town called Smithers, right close to, to the area, and that's where Pritium's uh, operations office was. So there's a hydropower line going right beside the Scotty gold mine. And so when they were building that power line, I was going, hmm, past producing gold mine, hydropower. And those were the two things that got me uh, initially uh, excited about this, and that would have been in 2015-16. Well, that power line's in, Bruce Jack is now in production, and uh, we work in uh, Nishka territory, of which, because I've lived in the area, th these are people I know personally, and, and you know, I'm one of the few CEOs. I know Rob McLeod, and the McLeods are from, from Stewart, but I mean, I'm kind of one of the only guys who'd have raised their families in the area. and uh, Which has a, a great impact. It does. It, it, I think it makes things easier, not to take things for granted, but with, with the local community. But, you know, 33% of our workforce is from the local community. Uh, so we're, yeah, we're having no issues and it seems to be working fine so far. <laughs> so far, knock yeah, on wood. You never take things for granted, but uh, I mean, we're blessed right now for sure. Amazing. Now, you're here for the next two days. What are you hoping to gain from being at this conference? Well, you know, this is a exercise of just keep a, pe keeping in front of people, keeping informed. I mean, uh, it's good to come to London, see the UK market. There's a lot of financial stuff that happens in London. And, and uh, you know, even though they might not be participating with me or anybody else, you just got to keep your, make sure your story is in front of them. And it's, I'm, I'm having great reception. It, it's like, you know, some of these meetings, you know, it was the second, third time. I was just in London uh, four months ago and went to Germany. And, and so it's just reconnecting with people and making sure they know we're still alive, we're still motivated, we're still working. You know, yeah. after coming off of the, the two years where we weren't able to have face-to-face -face interactions, it's really refreshing to be here and in front of people again. It is, and well, and because we did so many Zoom calls, but it's almost like then you see someone, you almost give them a hug, right? Like, uh, it's interesting because you've had a couple of Zoom calls in, in the past. So it's almost like you know each other and the ice is broken. Or so, yeah. Now we can at least drink to that. And have That's right. Che cheers a glass of wine, which That's is right. lovely. Brad, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Well, I appreciate your time. Have a great day. All right.